Hey there, it's Phil Bailey. I am doing these questions for you, my dear friend. And uh, let's go right from the first one. My name is Phil Bailey. And I prefer Phil. Um, what products and services do you provide? Well, being an entrepreneur, I provide a lot of different services. And those include web design, photography, marketing strategy like brand management or brand identity I do a lot of work with people on that kind of stuff I do um, I said web I do audio engineering um, I used to work at a studio like a home studio but um, I was an audio engineer so I, I mix sounds people would record songs I would make it sound better um, what else do I do um, I do like graphic design, I could do like flyers, posters and stuff like that, but mostly the biggest things are wedding photojournalism, um, documentary photography or videography, um, obviously architectural uh, like visualization, I don't do that as a career like now, but I've been working with people on the side to kind of like work on it, developing ideas so I can take ideas and basically make models or I can make uh, more perfect logos or more perfect somethings pretty fast and people like that um, and I make most of my business freelancing doing like wedding photography photojournalism video editing stuff like that um, other businesses that I have I well for one my the name of my company is called MCM Phil Bailey and it stands for modern and classical masterpieces by Phil Bailey so the short version of that is just modern masterpiece and people that know me know that I do everything from this like modern tech high-tech world and from the classical you know I love to have my wines and champagnes and steaks and stuff like that so I like to do the same with my art I like to go from what we did in history learn from that be inspired by like you know European architecture uh, European lifestyles, French, I like French and speaking French and stuff like that, so that kind of relates to other services. Um, but what I was going to say was my other business that I do is um, I have a, a YouTube channel in Motion Travel Guide. It's the letter N, Motion, and then Travel Guide. And I have lots of videos from the Philippines from my, my experiences there. So once I get more settled in San Francisco, I'm going to be doing a lot more Travel Guide stuff you know doing like guided tours guided hikes um, I just really love I really love business and I really love making uh, my clients very happy because some people are surprised at what I can do but part of being an entrepreneur is like making risk and like always thinking about the next big thing you always want to be the next big thing so that was everything from barcodes when they first came out nobody else knew about them but I was making my clients use barcodes and Google Maps and embedded maps and stuff like that. So I mean, I've, I've got a lot of history of that kind of stuff. Um, how long have I been in the business? I've been in the business officially as an LLC uh, sole prop for um, for just just about a year now. I was registered in Oregon as Phil Bailey LLC, and but I've been an entrepreneur since man, uh, Boys and Girls Club days, like middle school. 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade, throughout high school. I've been, you know, to MIT's campus for teen um, seminars and stuff like that with the Boys and Girls Club. I actually was a, I was a leadership member of a group called Keystone for Teens. And I've won art contests to DC, also through the Boys and Girls Club. And I've won awards of you like Youth of the Year, Youth of the Year in career and, um, what was it? It was Youth of the Year in I believe career development and leadership and career development. Um, what is the ownership? I've already said that's basically sole prop. Um, I don't think I want to do incorporation because I really want to keep my business um, closely knit. Um, how did I choose the name of my business? Well, well, Phil Bailey LLC is kind of a name that I can use under all of the different services that I have right now but the name MCM Phil Bailey turned into be modern masterpiece so as you see on a lot of my, my graphics or 
a lot of my um, marketing material will say modern masterpiece and that's because like I said it, it's uh, modern and classical masterpieces by Phil Bailey It's just taking out the middle middle words and shorting it up I think it rolls off the tongue better um, everything about my business is supposed to be five star I really want people to feel like they can talk to me as um, as a good friend they know that you know I respect them and their time they respect my time and my skill and I have so many ideas that are it's like masterpiece loft kind of ideas I have a, a business actually that when I get to San Francisco I'm gonna open it up and it's called masterpiece loft it's part of the modern masterpiece business you see so masterpiece loft is where I work on my creative projects with my colleagues or my peers you know and um, you know basically it would be like a commercial space or it could be a residential space but it's a place where you'd have a creative living space and you would have things like uh, some of my sponsors like idea paint Evernote all those kind of people like I could paint on the walls and have like uh, dry erase markers where I can like write ideas and sketch and stuff like that so different tools world says 25 percent savings ends today my computer talks. Last chance to shop our friends and family event. Hurry in. So our friends and family sale ends today. So shop that, now. Shh. View as a web page. Oh come on. Twenty six ninety eight Canyon Springs. Well, that's one thing people know about me is I'm really big in the tech. Like I got my Android. Really big in the tech. Um. Anyway, so that's basically how I got the name. It's uh, it it, it was MCM Phil Bailey. The long name is Modern and Classical Masterpieces by Phil Bailey. That's just way too much. And uh, part of being a marketer is understanding how consumers like things. They like things with two syllables. Modern Masterpiece is kind of a two-syllable name. Um, Google, Apple, um, Sprint, that's one syllable. One, two syllables, good to go. Um, which, by the way, I have a really big passion in studying like marketing and psychology. I've been doing that on my own time for for like a long time too. So I feel like as an entrepreneur, I have a good understanding of how people think and how to really relate to other people. Um, it's part of what makes me who I am. Who are my direct competitors? Oh my gosh, let me tell you about direct competitors. So it's because I do so many different businesses, like I said, from web design to photography, let's take it step by step. Web design, I make a lot of money doing web design. I, I My biggest job was like fourteen hundred dollars for a website for uh, an apparel company my average website is about five hundred dollars for you know you know one to five pages and um, real kind of simple but I use SEO which is search engine optimization and a little bit of uh, social media marketing to help promote the products that I put out for people on the web so my direct competitors are people like Wix.com, Squarespace Yahoo sites, any site that claims to give you a better site for free, basically my direct competitors. Um, also, direct competitors would be people like firms who will try to charge a little bit of money for sites, but they will have these restrictions. But I think that's why I win the competition because I have rates from 175 for portfolios all the way to you know fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars for full websites e-commerce you know SEO and custom like when you hold your phone like this versus like this it could be a completely different layout um, things like that so I think that's where I would win competition but um, those are direct competitors for web design for photography my direct competitors would be people that are just buying these like Nikons and Canons like T2Is and putting it on automatic mode and thinking that they can just go out and do a photo shoot and think that that's going to be okay. I've spent so much time in photography over my past. I've developed my own film. I've hand printed. I've enlarged my own my own work. have not been in galleries yet. I want to be in galleries. I haven't been in galleries yet. But I guarantee I'm going to have art, architecture, digital art. I'm going to have all kind of stuff in San Francisco when I get there. It's one of my goals. I believe as an entrepreneur, you have to really narrow n not narrow in but like zero in on a niche or a few niches because the work is usually seasonal sometimes sometimes wedding photography is not all in uh, sometimes you might want to do wedding video 
if you do, you might have to have extra lights or extra things. So depending on the time of year, um, de depends on what kind of work I do. But most of the time, year round, I do web design um, and marketing. Um, I really like to see businesses grow. Um, so for like I said, photography, direct competitor would be like an average person that would try to steal away my business or like a family member. It's like, oh, why would you pay Phil Bailey, you know, five hundred dollars? I'll shoot your wedding for like a hundred dollars. I'm like, dude. But do you know about getting, you know, the key shots, you know, the cake shot, you know, is there something specific that they want? Do you understand the F stops and about shutter speed and what shutter speeds mean to movement and like um, color balance and uh, objects and stuff like that. Uh, it's really irritating, but you know people are trying to make money out there, uh, so you can't blame them. Uh, number six, uh, what are the most dis difficult aspects of opening your business? What was the most difficult aspect of opening the business? Whew. Not having a storefront, but fortunately I was in a network where I was able to have people uh, in my network of about 20 direct people and about 100 to 200 indirect people in Portland. We pretty much had one of the biggest networks in Portland. I still am a part of that network. We call it NWC Team. Um, and um, one of my partners there, Northwest Regional, we, uh, we do a lot of things. We do events. Out, we put together events out there. We have these like monthly or sometimes season, uh, holiday events called like date nights where we have like a venue we spend about five grand on this venue we have couples that would spend about 30 to 50 per per couple dinner dance DJ entertainment all kinds of stuff like that so I had a lot of experience in planning those events out um, I mean it's just one other thing to keep me on my toes um, but but starting out wasn't so difficult I guess I just had to really do it you know I, I've been doing it so long um, just having ideas that uh, I just one day I was just like well my, my partner Eric in Portland he is the guy that owns Northwest Regional he was like hey man I really love your work and I really believe in your drive and your passion I need that kind of person in my life I became his assistant I was his assistant and creative director of his his team um, we were co-founders of the NWC team, which is a small branch of his company that focuses on entertainment, music. Uh, we shoot music videos. I actually recently started a music video uh, before I left Portland uh, for a rapper. That was pretty fun. Um, I shot and edited it all in three days. I do my own editing. I have my own distinct style of editing. It's very documentary-like and very, obviously, modern masterpiece. So black and white, high contrast, high def, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was the most difficult part, I guess, was finding the network. Um, what is the biggest day-to-day -day challenge in my operating my business? Ugh. Clientele. I have different levels of clientele. I have my five-star clients who, you know, they pay me all the time. There's no issues. They have clients who want to pay a little bit of money. They want to complain about, you know, whatever. Um, I guess that's going to be in, in any niche. You're always going to have, like, a lesser-than client. Sometimes, like right now, this season, for web design, I only have like really one or two main clients, and I actually had an issue where I had a late payment, um, and the guy was basically traveling out of the country, and as it just pissed me off because I'm like, dude, like you knew you were going to be going out of the country. Why would you not give your other partner the money to give to me? And so it's taken me a long time to get that payment, and I guess that's part of one of the risks of being an entrepreneur is that uh, your money is based on how much you hustle, how much you um, tap into different niches and how strong your network is, how reliable are your clients and I think that's one of the biggest challenges it's not at all hard to brainstorm ideas for me I have ideas all the time I can talk to a client and I give them ideas so oftentimes I'll charge just to talk to people to brainstorm I charge $75 for a brainstorm session as a, as a new client so if I want to do a website for you or a new marketing package $75 I'll talk to you I'll kind of get to know your psyche figure out who your target audiences are if you don't have them I will help you figure them out help you figure out keywords to put into YouTube search engines stuff like that um, so I guess the hardest part is I guess just you know dealing with clients that you may not be 
they may not be your favorite clients, but they are income. You don't have to work with anybody. That's a good thing about being an entrepreneur. I get to work with whoever I want. Sometimes I don't get to work with who I want to work with, or I may not um, get as much money on a project like I want to. So I have to make a risk about whether or not I want to do a project for lesser money. And if that project is going to be promoted, if it's going to be used, if it's going to have a lot of traffic, if it's for a nonprofit or some kind of organization, I would do it. If it's for just some small person and they don't have a big budget and they don't really are probably not going to use it, I'm probably not going to do the project or I'm not going to do it for that much money. I'm, I'm not going to do it for a little bit of money because it's not going to be worth my time. Um, my biggest reward in operating my own business is knowing that at the end of the day, no matter how much money that I've made or lost, I make a lot of investments. I've been I've invested probably over ten thousand dollars in audio equipment. The speakers currently behind me, my care case. I spent seven hundred plus dollars on the, the two speakers and, and acoustics. Um, I had Pro Tools, LE, audio engineering, industry standard software, everything from. Adobe Suite. I just built my new computer. Um, actually, I built it from the component. It's uh, oh, where is it? Oh, where is it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's it's basically here. It's very small. See the size of my hand. It's actually it's actually about the size of my Wacom. Yeah, so you can see right there, like my wallet, and that's basically the computer right there. It's a, it's called a mini ITX. It's an Intel i5 processor. I overclocked it, which means I'm getting more power out of it. And I mean, I just do all that kind of stuff. Like I could build computers for clients. I could help optimize computers. I mean, I'm just I'm so much into the tech world and to being my own business person that I just I just can't get enough of it. So. That's the rewarding thing. Is no matter at the end of the day, I know that the money that I make, the money that I lose, the money that I gain is all from doing the stuff that I love to do. Um, my other business for people to follow me is my biggest business plan is um, the AMA Foundation, which you may have heard me talk about in the AAU Who group. Which AAU Who is another another business. It's it's not necessarily a, a for profit business. It's actually more of a non profit kind of business, but I created it for Academy of Arts students to collaborate and have features that was not currently um, the school doesn't currently offer. So uh, that's that's something that I invest my time in. I, and and time is an investment as money is an investment. If you don't have the money to put into it, you have to put the time into it. So I mean, there's so many different businesses. But sorry, I keep getting sidetracked. But the AMA is a nonprofit. It's supposed to be like a Boys and Girls Club like an academy, a student from high school, you know, from ninth grade, let's say eighth grade to ninth grade, transitional eighth grade, ninth grade, freshman high school to a uh, college grad. You could enter my program and you could, you could be tu uh, tutored by mentors of your field from fashion to architecture, music, dance, uh, cinematography, photography. And when I get to San Francisco, we're going to start talking with schools, we have logos, we have about four or five different um, program directors working on ideas to make it better. Um, and I created the AAU Who group because the things and the way that we communicate in that group are similar to that of AMA, except for AMA is a lot more passionate, it's a lot more strong. People that are involved in AMA really care about collaborating, they really care about being entrepreneurs themselves. So. I guess part of my title is a freelancer, a freelance creative director, an entrepreneur, but there's a new term called intrapreneur. And I'm an intrapreneur more than I am an entrepreneur. And intra means that I'm actually working with larger organizations and I'm adopting to their ways, but I'm also bringing on my own ways to make their business better or to make the organization better as a whole. So hope that helps. My current website is mcmphilbailey.com. I'm going to send you links to photos. Um, definitely, I'll give you the website address. Um, my YouTube channels and motion travel guide. Um, my photography and motion channel. I'll send you all those links. 
um, and you can pretty much present it however you want to. If you need to, you can take clips of this video from YouTube and um, share part of it as well. I'm open for that. I'm in my pajamas and chilling, about to go to sleep. It's about 4, up oh, 5.21 in the morning. That's true sign of an entrepreneur. I'm always up brainstorming, working on stuff. And um, yeah, so all right, Eileen, I'll see you later. Phil Bailey, signing off.